It's that time again. What time is it? One Piece time. Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. I'm currently reading the One Piece series for the very first time and I am now on the Jaya arc. Is it Jaya? Jaya? Jaya. I feel like Jaya feels right. And I've definitely got a problem. I have been... I need to show you. I need to... I... I need to shut up and show you. But before all of that, yes, I've completed the East Blue Saga, I've completed the Alabasta Saga, and now I'm on the Sky Island Saga. So in this video, I'll be covering the Jaya arc, and then later on this month, I will be covering the Skypea arc, which are the only two arcs in the saga, so I'll be flying through. The Jaya arc only has 19 chapters, which makes a huge difference to the Alabasta arc I just did, which had well over 60, and that video was over two hours long. And honestly, I love that you guys really don't mind long videos. Hopefully this video does have a good length to it, but fortunately it doesn't have 60 chapters. 19 sounds very doable. So this covers chapters 218 to chapter 236. Just another 850 chapters to go. So a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Please no spoilers after the Jaya arc. Again, I haven't read Skypea or onwards after this video goes up. Or I might have done if it's like way in the future. But like, please don't do anything that would spoil anything that's coming up. But I know you guys, the One Piece community on YouTube has been so phenomenal and so welcoming and amazing. And you guys have been so great and not spoiling things for me in the comments. Please do leave all the comments down below though because I love chatting to you about One Piece. I love learning more about what I've missed during these arcs and you know things that have happened earlier in the series as well that I might have missed a connection to in the current arc that I'm reading. So please do like let me know everything down below. I want to chat One Piece to you. I feel like you guys are the only people I chat One Piece with. I've got no one in real life who will talk to me about it. Which brings me to my second thing. I went into Forbidden Planet last week and I heard people talking about a card piece one game. Card piece one game? One Piece card game. And the guy at Forbidden Planet said, oh, there were only so many allocated in the UK, it's been selling out really fast. So I was like, hold up, hold your horses right there. So I did end up getting the four starter decks that were available. I haven't opened these, okay? I haven't opened them. I'm not even looking at the back. I don't even know what it says. I don't even know what's inside them. I'm not looking at them because I do not know anything about anything that's coming up. I can't even open the straw hat one because it will have spoilers for who joins the straw hats later on. However, I did get six booster packs because they were only allocating six per customer and traveling man and Forbidden Planet had sold out. So I was like, I do not want to miss this opportunity of getting it because I will end up catching up to One Piece in regret not picking these up. So I do have them. I did open a pack because it says Romance Dawn on it. So I thought, oh, I've read the Romance Dawn arc, maybe in a sweet summer child. And the first character I saw, I had no idea who they were. So I didn't look any further and I put it away I don't even know what that character's name was. I just stopped looking. And now I feel like I do have to wait until next year when I caught up with the series to actually see what the cards are and what's in the starter decks and stuff. So yeah, I just wanted to tell you guys this first and foremost. I'm not looking at them. I'm not gonna spy myself with them, but I had to get them because they were selling out. I did end up doing a manga island too where I put one piece on one side and I've been putting manga on the other side because I'm starting to collect other mangas and I cannot wait to read them. I have so many plans for them. But yeah, now that I have my library room back, I thought let's create a manga island. So I do have a video where I set this up, if you want to check it out, of course. But also the last thing, last thing before I start reading this arc, have you ever wanted to go to Japan? Because I know I have. And I am working with Trova Trip so that I can host a trip to Japan next year, next September. It'll be September 2nd to September 8th. And it's a super cheap trip as well where all the accommodation is sorted, your breakfasts are sorted every morning, there's a few meals that have been paid for, and all of the activities as well are covered and we are doing so much. Okay, these are the things that we'll be doing. We'll be having dinner with the Mako. We'll be having guided temple visits, shrine visits. We're gonna have a traditional tea ceremony. We're going on boat tours. We're gonna be going to two other cities. Like there's so much that we're gonna be doing in that one week and we have a guide the entire time. Everything's gonna be sorted as soon as we land. Transfers are sorted and it just sounds like an incredible, amazing, once a lifetime opportunity. If you ever had to go to Japan and you'll be there with me and a few other like book nerds, then there is a link down in the description box with all the information even if you just want to check it out, have a little bit of a peruse of it. There are 24 spots on there and 11 have already been taken. I don't anticipate selling out just yet, but I think you have plenty of time at the minute to maybe, I don't know, think about it, have a little look, say what your budget's like and all of that. But yeah, I thought I would mention it here as well because I just think Japan would be the perfect place to go and we'd be going on an adventure together essentially. And without further ado, let's get into the 19 chapters of the Jaya arc. Sorry for the false start again. I need to head into town first to pick up a manga that I had ordered online, but 
still hasn't got here and it's been a little while and it's for my manga tournament video which I'm working on right after this vlog and I need this volume I need it so much and I've been looking online for it and fortunately a local bookshop has one in finally has one in I did check like last week and they didn't have it but now they do so I click and collected it I'm going into town to get it even though there is snow everywhere and it's gonna snow later too but I need to pick this up and then I will start One Piece Jaya I promise <laughs> I spent too much money on manga today the first chapter of the Jaya arc was mainly to bring Nico Robin into the fold and we have some resistance from our straw hats. I absolutely loved where Nami was like, I'm gonna keep an eye on you. And Nico Robin's like, I brought some of Crocodile's jewels. And Nami's like, I love you sister. And she's just, I know how to win Nami over each and every time. But the interrogation with Usopp was hilarious too. I, I, uh, <laughs> I loved when Usopp was like, what's your specialty? And Nico Robin was like, assassination. <laughs> and she's just like so, chill she is so chill just like the little love heart just like hee hee in the background this panel as well where sanji because obviously sanji loves her already when he's getting the food for her and you see him dancing along until he gets to her i absolutely love like the art style of that and also i was confused at the end of the alabaster saga when nico robin was like luffy you owe me and i had no idea what she meant by that because I thought they were like even in what they did but we saw this flashback at the very start of this chapter that when Nico Robin had found the Poneglyph and it wasn't the right one she wanted and Luffy ended up saving her from like the crumbling place and she was like no leave me I don't want to live and Luffy's like no I'm taking you even though she wanted to stay behind because her main goal is to find the real Poneglyph the one that tells you the real history and so now it, it seems like this world has this history that nobody really knows about and Nico Robin's trying to uncover the secrets of that because maybe, just maybe, by uncovering the secrets of what happened in the past might inform things that are happening in the present or like in the future of the series. I don't know, but it feels like this real Poneglyph thing is like such a huge thing for Nico Robin, but not just for Nico Robin, but... Not just for Nico Robin, but for everyone. Ash, are you okay? So, I mean, Nami did say she was going to keep an eye on her. I feel like she still will. And I feel like I still have to keep an eye on her too. But, like, I felt so awful for her when she literally just did not want to live. She really wanted to... Oh, now he's having a shit. She really just wanted to stay where she was and let the place take her. Okay, editing Gav coming in here because I was so distracted by the fact that my cat was having a shit while I was trying to talk about something that was so, like, heartbreaking and dark that I ended up totally forgetting to even, like, talk about it more in depth. And that was Nico Robin saying that she wanted to die. Like, that was... Oh my god, it's so awful. Like, I felt so bad for her in that moment. And I feel bad for not mentioning it more before, but honestly, I was just so distracted with the cats. But yeah, it just, it showed Nico Robin in like a totally new light. It really enhanced the fact that she has this huge goal and that she's desperate to get to it as well. Like, I've never read something more heartbreaking since... Well, since Nami asked for help back in Arlong Park. And the fact that Luffy didn't let her do that, he does what he, like, thinks is good for his friends, essentially. And I feel like at that moment between Luffy and Nico Robin was like Luffy saying, I'm not gonna let you die. We're friends now, you know? Like, you've saved me, I save you. That's the thing. Like, that's the deal between them. And it really does instill, I think, and what I mentioned about Luffy as well, is that he has instilled in Nico Robin again the desire to continue with her dream. And that really did... It hit me hard, honestly. When I was reading it, it hit me hard. And I was like, gosh, like to have a friend like Luffy, like I'm currently having some like friend problems myself. And I'm just thinking like what I would give, honestly, what I would give to have somebody who would look at me when I'm like, I don't want to go on, you know, and to be like, I'm not going to give you that option. I'm with you all the way and I'm going to help you. I'm going to save you. And it's just like, oh, so like that whole thing was like so glorious and I think now that in hindsight I've read the entire arc now and I'm just editing the vlog, in hindsight I think it's probably my favourite moment from the arc. Yeah, I think it probably is, but I'm kicking myself that I didn't give it enough of a analysis when I mentioned it. I feel awful for just like brushing past it, but honestly my cats have the worst timing. What can I say? <laughs> so I'm so torn by her because I feel like I shouldn't trust her straight away, but at the same time I'm like... Ah, she seems so likeable in such a weird way. But the ending of this as well, a galleon fell from the sky. And that was a very exciting moment. But when the log pole started to point up 
and Nami says, ah, oh, they broke it. But Nico Robin's like, no, it means that a sky island has, what was it claimed? Our log post has been captured by a sky island. And I should know, just judging from the saga title alone, it's sky, isn't it sky island saga? I believe that's what the saga's called. So really I should have seen that coming. But having this guy in full from the sky, which was quite terrifying because it's like a skull and everything. And it just seems like, what the hell's going on? How are they going to get to the sky island? What? How? <laughs> So that's gonna be really interesting to find out. Anything else? No, it was really just bringing Nico Robin in. That's a bit nasty. But I'm so glad Nico Robin is part of the crew because I do feel like she will be able to bring so much knowledge and lots of things that she can do for the team. Like she seems very powerful. So yeah, I think we got ourselves a winner with Nico Robin, I think. I hope I'm not proven wrong. This arc is already feeling way more piratey than I would say the last few arcs. Yeah, because we're still on the sea, we're still on the ship and they are trying to explore the ship that's sinking. Usopp actually creates this incredible device that's gonna help, especially with Luffy. Come on, Luffy, he should not be going into the sea. That's just like a given. You should not be going to say. But Usopp has created this like kind of barrel thing that Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji have put on. And they're going to go down and try and salvage the ship. Although there's just the three of them. Or at least like try and find things on the ship because Luffy before it sank had found a map to Sky Pier. I'm just getting so many adventure piratey vibes from it. And I'm telling you, I love it. Like I, don't get me wrong, I love the Alabaster Rock. And I'm only two chapters in, but like, I love the, like the sense of adventure just around the corner, you know, finding a new island and one that's in the sky as well. Like that's just so exciting. And yeah, now we, oh yeah. So <laughs> we also have met someone. He's called Salvage King Masira. And he seems quite fun. I love his design. He's like very big. He almost looks like a huge teddy bear because he comes across our straw hats. And at first I think in our crap, he's gonna, you know, kick our asses. But fortunately he doesn't. But then some of Masira's men get beaten up on the sea floor where Luffy and everyone is. And Masira doesn't know that Luffy and the Straw Hats are down there. But he shouts over to Nami, be careful there are some bad guys down there. And Nami's like, oh, phew, he's an idiot. Masira just seems so like nice in a way. Like, you know, I don't know. I, I like him, I like him. I don't know if he's sticking around. He seems quite vain as well, asking, do you think I'm handsome? I mean, not really. I mean, compared to Ace, for example, absolutely not. But yeah, the sunken ship is apparently Masira's. So the, he's taken an expedition team down and they're gonna salvage the ship. But Luffy, Sanji and Zoro are down there and they shouldn't be down there, according to Masira. Although Masira doesn't know that they're down there yet. So there's gonna be some kind of drama that's gonna happen, I think. <laughs> so yeah, their ship is tiny compared to Masira's anyway. And I don't even know how in the world they're gonna get up to the Sky Island. I think the Sky Island is Sky Pier because that's what the map says, but I love the map. Like, look how adventurous that looks. Like, don't you just wanna go? It makes you wanna be a kid again when you find a treasure map that, you know, your parents secretly hid and you know, you're on your way to a new location and there is treasure there or something there that's yet to be discovered, you know? And that's what I love about One Piece is the exploration. So it's great to have like another one. Also, I think it was in the previous chapter as well, Nico Robin said that the next island will probably be an autumn island because of the whole like seasonal thing. And yeah, we've had Drum Island, we've had Alabasta. So now it seems like there's gonna be an autumn island next. And I'm excited for that. Well, Shane, I don't know if we're gonna be getting some monstro Pinocchio action here, but we ended this chapter on a bit of a cliff hanger. Again, I don't think I mentioned this, but there are quite a few sea monsters on the sea floor as well. So like, this is totally dangerous. This is totally not a very safe environment for Luffy, Zoro and Sanji to be, you know, exploring. But yeah, they're in the ship, they're exploring the ship. And I love the fact that they can't talk to one another because yeah, they're trying to conserve their air and they are covered in barrel. Well, Luffy's covered in barrels. Sanji and Zoro just have it on their heads. And it's such a cool design, honestly. Nico Robin also in the previous chapter, look, I read these chapter by chapter. I should know exactly everything that happens in that chapter but I keep forgetting. Yeah, in the previous chapter, sorry, Nico Robin was examining the skull and the skeleton that, you know, that they brought up because she was investigating this like coffin thing. And she can kind of figure out from the remains and from this coffin, what happened to the ship. It's like 200 years old. Chopper as well got a little bit of his medical advice in there as well about the, the drill holes in the skull. And apparently the ship had sailed over 200 years ago. So the fact that it's dropped from the sky now is so interesting. Like what is the story with this? It apparently came from the South Blue as well. And it was, I think an exploration ship. 
So there's just so many things at the minute that I'm like, oh, adventure, you know? But yeah, Zoro, Luffy, and Sanji are still exploring the ship. Love, love, love those scenes. And then we have Masira. He is getting the ship up off the sea floor. And he ends up coming onto the ship because of the interference that Luffy and the other Straw Hats are doing. And he totally mishears Luffy when he says, oh, you look like a monkey. What, you think I'm hunky? And so very quickly, very, very quickly, Masira and Luffy seem to have become friends. <laughs> so now at the end of the chapter, they've all been swallowed or eaten by this huge monster, this huge sea monster. So I don't know if we're gonna be getting some like inside the whale action, but it's very exciting when you could see the shadow under the water and it's slowly getting closer and closer to the ship too. So exciting. When I think of piratey adventure stories, this is the kind of arc I was thinking of. It's just great stuff to read on a Monday morning. Our straw hats can't have a quiet moment, can they? <laughs> they even say at the end of the chapter as well, uh, Sanchez like, something's just not right today. If one galleon was bad enough, needle pointing up to the sky. We had monkey came and salvaged the wreck. Giant turtle gobbled them up. Suddenly got dark. And then there were some like gigantic, they look like peep, People, I mean, they say monsters, but they're like shaped like, hu well, they're shaped human-like with wings and some big sticks or like big spears or something. That's terrifying. And have you seen how small they are compared to it? Like they're all the way, where is it? They're all the way down there. And they're like that. Like they've got no chance. Although I feel like they might have gotten away. But someone tells me it's not that easy. Oh my God. <laughs> I didn't even realise this when I first read it. But the very end as well, when they've kind of gotten away from the monster, um, <laughs> Masira is also like sitting with them like few. And then Sanji, Zoro and Luffy kick him off the ship in the next panel. Like I, for some reason I totally missed him sitting there. I, I noticed that they kicked him off the ship, but I totally missed the fact that he was just so like nonchalant and he's just sitting there as if he's part of the crew. It's hilarious, absolutely hilarious, love that. But yeah, the giant turtle thing, it didn't swallow them, but Luffy and Zoro and Sanji did get off it, didn't even realize that they'd been ate by a, a big turtle. Yeah, they've got some treasure, Nami's happy, and as long as Nami's happy, we're all happy, right? Nico Robin, again, coming in with a lot of the facts. It was scary as well, scary but exciting, when the ship started getting pulled down with the turtle because of the attachment cords to the barrel contraption thing that Usopp made. Just boom, 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 boom. There is just no quiet or dull day on the Grand Line, which is great. Zoro seems to think that Jaya looks like a fun place. I beg to differ. I already regret the fact that our straw hats are now there because it is a place where pirates and ruffians can essentially run wild because there is no government there or the government can't touch them there. I feel like that's a bad thing. <laughs> like as much as the government and the Marines and all of that have been such a pain in the arse for Luffy and the gang, but when there's an island full of really cutthroat pirates, that just feels worse. Like that feels wrong. <laughs> it already seems bad because we had the hyena, Bellamy the hyena, captain of the Bellamy pirates, playing some kind of card game with Roshi or the executioner and sticking a knife through his hand when he thought he was cheating. Now, I don't know if he was actually cheating or was he? Like, I can't quite tell if he was. Yeah, it just seems like they could literally kill one another and nobody would bat an eye. Yeah, I'm just a bit worried. I'm a bit worried for our team. Anyway, they do get to Jaya. Luffy wanted to go to the Sky Island, but obviously they need to try and find and know how to get there, of course. So they, <laughs> this is why Nico Robin is like an amazing addition to the team so far, because she, and like Nam even says this, like I finally have an ally on the ship, the ship full of fools. And Nico Robin, I guess while everyone was distracted, managed to sort of pickpocket the log paws that Masira had, which, you know, Masira is from, or at least he says that it's his territory, you know, Jaya. So amazing. If it wasn't for Nico Robin, what would they do? Essentially, what would they do? And Nami, bless her, like she really tries. She really tries and she overlooks the fact that the rest of them sometimes are just so uh, infuriating, infuriatingly dense, but it's what makes it so endearing though. I love it. But I'm loving the sense of danger that this arc is bringing already. It seems a little bit subtle so far, but even before they get to Jaya, there are some seagulls that fall from the sky that have been shot. And when there was this like really creepy looking guy as well who had shot them down and said that they probably suffered. I don't know his name because it didn't say his name, but this guy here, 
I mean, we may never see him again. Because he could just literally be one of many characters on this island that's just a little bit doolally. I'm scared. I'm actually scared of them getting on this island. And they are on this island now. And that's why Zoro says it seems like a fun place. And I feel like Zoro can handle himself. Of course, I feel like all of them could handle themselves in a way... Usopp might need some help. Bellamy looks deranged. Like, that's a crazy man right there. Get out. Get out of there now. <laughs> Love that Nico Robin has gone off to do her own thing. What is she doing? What is she up to? I have no idea. But I also have no doubt that it's iconic. Whatever it is she's doing. So yeah, Nami, Luffy, and Zoro are in this town now. They are in Jaya. They are in Jaya themselves. <laughs> Oh, that was bad. Well, Nami has made Luffy and Zoro promise her that they're not going to fight anyone. Because if they start fighting anyone, then that will mean they'll get kicked out of the island and they won't get... Got the door! Right, I literally forgot what I was talking about because, yeah, the door went and I got another parcel. I've had about three come today. I thought it was going to be a nice, quiet Monday morning and then it's just been distraction, distraction, distraction. But we are going to get through this arc. We are. We're going to get through this arc today and it's going to be wonderful. Ow. So I can't remember what I was saying before, but we did meet the Bellamy Pirates and they look so cool, like so chill and hip. I don't know if people use the word hip anymore, I might show my age, but they just seem so normal, <laughs> like normal pirates, apart from Bellamy because he looked weird, he looked crazy, but the rest of them seem like they're just chilling out in a club. Now they know that Luffy has a 30 million bounty on him though, so they kind of know he's a, a pirate, he's quite a notorious pirate, but they're like... Well, they ended up bumping into the first mate, Big Knife Sawquiss. And I love how Luffy just turned around to Nami and was like, Nami, can I beat this guy up? And she's like, absolutely not. So Sawquiss has seen the wanted poster and at the very end of the chapter, we had Bellamy come into the place where Luffy and Nami and Zoro are. And for some reason, we had the, the weirdest exchange between Luffy and a guy who was sitting next to him. And it seemed like they were trying to compete with one another. One of them said something was bad. The other one said it was good. The other one said something was good. The other one said something was bad. Can you stop? It was just a weird exchange, okay? But then, yeah, we have Bellamy come in at the end. Why is he so deranged looking? He's like covered in shadow, he has one eye open, his tongue out. Well, I guess he looks like a hyena, which is his name, Bellamy the Hyena. But like, it's just weirding me out. He really is. Okay, I'm not 100% sure what's going on. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do know what's going on. I'm, I'm reading on now. But yeah, the way that this chapter ended, I'm like... But to be fair though, to be fair, I think this chapter did a really good job at displaying the fact that Luffy has learned not to act irrationally. Because yeah, back in the day, Luffy would punch first, ask questions later. But he's actually shown so much restraint in this chapter. And he even ends the chapter with like, because um, Nami says, oh, forget about the promise, kick those guys' asses. But Luffy's like, no, don't fight them. And I, I, I'm glad, I am glad that he isn't acting irrationally and he probably still wants to get all the answers he wants because Bellamy says to him the Sky Island thing is a myth and he's gullible for believing it and pirates die all the time chasing their dreams but he thinks they're fools for even dreaming like that. You know, Emerald City, the One Piece, things like that shouldn't be things that you chase after because they're just dreams. So I remember when Usopp defended Luffy's dream and I feel like Luffy here is probably going to defend his dream and show him that you shouldn't be somebody who just takes things as, you know, like scientific fact. Sometimes things happen that can't be explained and you have to keep chasing your dreams because you just never know what's going to happen. That's what I hope for anyway. I think that's the direction Luffy's probably going to go in because Luffy is not going to stand by and let somebody squash his dream. So I'm interested to see what he's going to do now. But yeah, the entire tavern pretty much laughed at Luffy and I just, I, my heart broke a little. I was like, don't laugh at his dream. I'm like Usopp in the previous arc, you know, defending Luffy and his dream. Like, let him dream, let him do this. But also there was an interesting thing that Bellamy said about currents and new currents being discovered in the Grand Line all the time. So it could just be that the fact that the ship had got swept in this current and like propelled in the sky and like fell from the sky kind of thing. So he is trying to, I think, gaslight Luffy a little bit here with trying to say that. I mean, maybe that is what happened, but I, I don't know. I don't, I'm now starting to doubt whether there is an actual Sky Island myself. But I'm just like, why? Why are they 
so against there being in a sky island. What are they hiding exactly, you know? A slow paced chapter was really just, well, a lot of Bellamy crushing Luffy's dream, but I don't think Luffy's gonna take the bait. Oh, my heart was breaking for Luffy and Zoro being humiliated and taunted in front of everyone, getting drinks spat in their faces and, oh, like even Nami was so right when she said they were like third rate bullies. And I, oh, I hate saying stuff like that. I really do, because it's like, a little bit triggering, not gonna lie. But I was just like, I was so sad for them. And even I was like, come on, fight back, fight back, you can do this. But then it, there was a great panel of sort of like a flashback to Shanks. And I remember, gosh, yes, in the very first volume, Shanks had said something like, needless fighting doesn't make you a man or something like that. And I think Luffy realized, and because he's learning, he's learning so much, he's realized that, you know, this fight didn't need to happen or the fight with Bellamy and Sarquist doesn't need to happen. It is one of those needless fights that Shanks had mentioned and he even said to Ace as well that he was promised that he was going to like surpass him one day and I feel like this is such like a huge step to Luffy's character development and him becoming like again like one of the best pirates ever because like yeah he, he didn't need to fight which like I do wish he defended himself and like he didn't ha like him and Zoro and I love what I love about Zoro is the fact that he also stood with Luffy he didn't raise a sword he didn't do anything to jeopardize what Luffy was doing in the moment and he just put his complete trust that Luffy was doing what he needed to do. And poor Nami, like her heart was breaking too. I felt like Nami in this situation. And Nami as well, when I think it was Sokwis who said to her, how much are you? You don't need to be with those pathetic pirates. I will buy you or something like that. And Nami standing up for herself was fantastic. Like she didn't use her fists. She used her words and she, as an honest to God fucking queen. <laughs> oh, honestly, like my favorite triquetra of characters are Luffy, Zoro, and Nami. Like, I love them so, I mean, I love all of the characters. Chopper, Usopp, Robin, Sanji, you know, I, I love them too. I mean, Robin's getting there. I mean, she's been MIA for a little bit. Again, I have no idea what she's up to. I don't know what she's doing, but I bet your ass it's gonna be something important and it's gonna be something that's gonna be revolutionary for, for trying to find this Sky Island. But anyway, the, the man from the previous chapter who I mentioned, was having that kind of little weird thing with Luffy about kind of one-upping him and them both being like, oh, I hate this, oh, I love this. That that man, what was so nice was that he, he kind of reinstated the idea that pirates should still dream and that the New Age of Pirates will never die because dreams will always live or something like that. And it was like very, like there was like this moving speech from him. And I was like, one minute he was like competing with Luffy, but it was like kind of in a friendly way. Like it never got into like fisticuffs, so it wasn't like violent, but it was still odd. Like it, it, it was still a strange interaction. But then it was really nice that he kind of reaffirmed the whole dreaming thing. And he did say, I'm, I'm pretty sure he said that the Sky Island was real, even though everyone was trying to tell him that it wasn't. And I love the fact that this man from before said, let them laugh if you're aiming for the top, you don't always need your fist to show your might. Yes, sir. But he also says, I hope you make it to the Sky Island. So he does confirm it. For them. Although he could just be a random guy off the street. He could be just as crazy as Bellamy the hyena is. But no, he, he's, oh, he was so nice. <laughs> but also I feel like we are going to be getting Masira back because back on the ship, Usopp is trying to fix it. Sanji and Chopper are there too. And they hear salvage, salvage, like the song. And it's salvage, salvage. So it seems like he's coming back. So there's going to be trouble there, I think for kicking him off the ship and causing trouble while they were trying to salvage the ship. But I kind of like Masira in a strange way. He was just like this big, I mean, he was, he was a big monkey, but like kind of cuddly one in a way. Like he seems all tough and stuff, but I feel like he has a heart of gold really. At least that's what I got from him. I don't think he's bad, but like obviously he's now like kind of an antagonist to Luffy and the team because they've crossed paths. It hasn't been an easy interaction with them. I just want to know what Nico Robin's up to. Seriously, why is she continuing to elude me? And I feel like I'm the kind of person who wants the answers to everything right now. And Nico Robin being this huge mystery, it's like, I need to know everything about you. I want to know every single detail. Like, what are you up to right now? But if anything, I feel like this giant arc so far has been so great character development, especially Luffy and Nico Robin. I feel like them two are getting like such huge character development arcs in this Jaya arc. Call a doctor, that's you. You know, Chopper hasn't really been all that 
I guess active or that prominent since Drum Island to be honest but I like having these little touches of humour with him every now and then. But yeah, Nami can't understand why Luffy and Zoro didn't fight back so she still needs to kind of wrap her head around the fact that not all fights need to be fought with fists. So I'm sure we'll get there someday. Of course Nico Robin was out actually doing some work as well when she went MIA she was asking around she found out about apparently this weirdo that lives on the island who was talking about dreams who might be able to help them reach the sky island or sky pier and she also was getting some new clothes too what did I say like icon queen she is doing the most and it wasn't Masira who was on their way in the ship and was singing salvage salvage it was his brother and his brother is called salvage king of the sea floor shoju I think it's Shoju, and he's literally tearing apart their ship by just singing. And that's a really crazy and cool power though. So like, they're rushing away to get away from him. But now also Bellamy, the hyena, knows about the weirdo and also wants to meet this weirdo. So now we have the Straw Hats and the hyena on their way to this weirdo, whoever it is. And I thought maybe it would be the guy from before who was competing with Luffy and said that Skypiea was real essentially. I'm not 100% sure because Robin said his name is Mont Blanc Cricket. Is that French? Is it a bit like Mr. Two Bonclay? But yeah, good times, good times. But interesting as well that Shoujo says that he is gonna fill the spot of Crocodile as one of the seven warlords of the sea. And I'm like, oh yeah, cause would they replace Crocodile? Like who would they replace him with? Do they constantly need seven warlords of the sea? Or when one falls, does that mean they're never replaced? And that means there's only six Warlords of the Sea now. And we kind of just go from there. And hopefully we will see Luffy and the team beat them one by one in the future. I don't know. Like, there's lots to learn. Still lots to learn. Also, I loved reading the results of a One Piece character popularity poll. And this must have been back when this first published. 20 years ago or something. Luffy's first, of course. Zoro's second. Sanji's third. Chopper's fourth. And Nami's fifth. Now I'm like... I do love Chopper, don't get me wrong, he's on my shirt somewhere, down here, he's on my shirt. But Nami being fifth, after Chopper, when Chopper, to be honest, hasn't really done a whole lot since Drum Island, I'm like, and considering Nami's being a huge integral part, I'm just like, that doesn't make sense. Number eight for Ace as well, are you kidding me? Number eight? But to be fair, the top six are the Straw Hats, and then Shanks is number seven, Ace is number eight. But then Bonclay is number nine and that makes me so happy. Vivi's number 10 and I miss Vivi. It reminded me that I miss Vivi. I want Vivi back so bad. Nico Robin's 11th. But I'm sure that number will go up when she's been in more of the story. I'm sure. Because already I'm feeling like, oh, I'm really liking her so far. But do they do more character popularity polls? Results of the second popularity poll. 51,873 total votes cast. When was the first character popularity poll. I feel like I might have glanced at it in one of the previous volumes, but I can't remember when that was and what volume it's in. I might have to take that out and have a look and compare to see how different it is. And it'll be great as well to see the third character popularity poll if there is another popularity poll. Please let me know if there is. That's not a spoiler, so that, please feel free to tell me if there are constant popularity polls. Because I would love to see how that progresses through the series. I don't even know how I would rank these characters yet. Like, that's how much I love them. <laughs> <laughs> be interesting for me to do that though. I do want to do some kind of my favourite One Piece character so far, my favourite One Piece moment so far and stuff like that. I would love to do something like that. Let me know if you think that's a good idea or if you think I should just wait until I've caught up and then do it. I freaking love it. And I finished as well volume 24. Can't believe that. Now I'm on volume 25. I'm on volume 25 and there are currently 100 English volumes out. So I'm a quarter of the way through the series. Well, once I finish this volume, which I think the entire rest of the Jaya arc. Yeah, it is. The rest of this volume is the rest of the Jaya arc. And then once I've completed this arc, I am a quarter of the way through. Also, can I ask a question? When is volume 101 actually out in English? Because I think in America, it said something like December 6th. But then when I look on Amazon UK, it says January. And I have looked on other websites too. And some of them say December, some of them say January. And I want to go into Forbidden Planet or Traveling Man or wherever I can get manga. And I want to buy my first One Piece volume in person because I did buy all 100 volumes that I own from a seller on eBay. So I never actually had the pleasure of going into a store and buying them. I want to feel that. I want to feel 
getting that one piece volume in person and handing it to the person at the till and them checking it through with me buying it in person. So I need to do that when volume 101 comes out, but I don't know if it's supposed to be this month or next month or, or what. And it might also be different between America and the UK. So I am in the UK. If anyone knows the British release date, please let me know. Because I want to go in on the day it comes out and get it. I'm just, I want to buy one piece in person, okay? Not a whole lot to say about this chapter. We do end up meeting Mont Blanc Cricket and we do find out more about Norland the Liar. And apparently Mont Blanc Cricket is a descendant of this liar. And it was very interesting that we have this famous children's story about a liar. And even Nami did this. She looked at Usopp at some of it. And he was like, what are you looking at? But it does feel very reminiscent of Usopp himself. And I've been loving you guys telling me about like whenever something actually true has happened that Usopp had lied about back in Syrup Village and it's ended up coming true. Like, please keep pointing those out to me. I can't remember all of the lies that he told, but it's so awesome when a lie becomes true. It's like... What's happening here? It, it's so intricate and so fascinating. But it feels really cool to have this Nolan the Liar story and how famous it is. And even Sanji knew it as well. Like, he grew up in the North Blue. Oh no, he was born in the North Blue, grew up in the East Blue. Yeah, even he knew the story. It's a famous children's story. And Nolan lied about, well, they say he lied about a lot of stuff. He would have these huge adventures. Sounds a lot like Usopp. And yeah, he told the king that there was this like, island of treasure and they go out to it, but it seems that it might have sunk. So nobody ended up believing him and that was it. He ended up dying and he was never a warrior of the sea. And that's all Usopp wants to do. That's all Usopp wants to be is a warrior of the sea. Interesting parallels there. And I feel like maybe the whole Nolan story might be important, but we did meet Mont Blanc Cricket. And there was also a moment where Luffy was pulled into the water as well when he saw bubbles come up and a guy had pulled him in and and he's unconscious at the minute. They've saved him from the water after he pulled Luffy in. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah, I don't have any thoughts right now. I'm just vibing. Honestly, I'm just vibing. But yeah, let's find out what that story entails. Don't think there's any backstory. No flashbacks, I don't think. <laughs> he went down in history as a liar and his descendants have been the objects of ridicule ever since. It's not me! <laughs> so yeah, they've kind of saved Mon Black Cricket and they're talking to him. It's also revealed that Shoju and Masira are both, you know, working with Mon Blanc Cricket. They call him boss. And yeah, that's probably the biggest thing that was revealed in the chapter. Just more about Nolan the liar. Yeah, so Cricket is Nolan's descendant and has not exactly been trying to clear his name. I'm a little bit confused of his motives, not gonna lie. I felt like th this chapter wasn't really, or at least... It's weird, the way that he was explaining the story, like Cricket was explaining the story to Usopp and Luffy and stuff, I, do, I was a little bit confused at what he was actually trying to say. And he was saying that Jaya is the place where the story is set, where Noland had, you know, apparently said where the um, City of Gold had sunk and stuff like that. Usopp's like, oh, so you're diving the depths to try and find this thing to clear his name? He's like, no, but he is kind of trying to clear his name. But I, I don't know because he's not saying he's not trying to clear his name. But anyway, I don't know if maybe I just needed to read this again, I don't know. But yeah, it was a little bit of a confusing chapter. But not a whole lot happened, just a lot of talk and we do have, well, a couple of things actually. Cricket does say that he will help them get to the Sky Island and he will get Masira, oh, I keep forgetting their names, honestly, their names are just not sticking with me today. Shoju and Masira, they're gonna be helping, apparently. And also the fact that Cricket has said that Noland was no liar. He was no liar. And it's also interesting that his name is Noland. It kind of sounds like no land. No land. Noland. No land. Not a whole lot to say about this chapter. I do feel like I was a little bit confused by Cricket's story, essentially. Yeah, another decent chapter. A lot of chat, a lot of talking, a lot of trying to theorise how to get to Skypea. And yeah, there's a, apparently a, an upstream thing that's going to happen and a cloud that turns day into night due to how dense it is. And they need to get the timing exactly right, getting the ship over this place, that the upstream, and to blast off into the clouds. But if they get it wrong at all, then the ship will come down and get smashed into smithereens. So it's going to be really dangerous, but what else is new? Yeah, oh, there was something funny that happened as well. What was it again? I mean, I partly love this, okay? So Usopp ends up standing up to Cricket, actually, and he doesn't quite believe Cricket, even though <laughs> Usopp was kind of in the liar role back in the day and the fact that Usopp doesn't believe someone says a lot 
It does say a lot. And you know what? Usopp brings up some very important points. Like, why is Cricket being so overtly nice to them? Why is he letting his comrades help and, you know, not expect anything in return, really? And everything just seems, like, so convenient and the timing is just too good that Usopp is like, wait, hang on, something doesn't add up. I, I don't know if Cricket's lying or not. I know a lot of characters in the past have shown a lot of kindness towards the Straw Hats, typically for, well, for a reason. So it is nice that Usopp tried to think a little bit outside the box, essentially. And <laughs> he goes, Nami, am I just a pitiful coward? She says, yup, and an idiot too, but I understand how you feel. Now go apologize. Just the brutal honesty of the Straw Hats, the brutal honesty of these friends, just absolutely impeccable. Freaking love them. Five out of five. Not much more to say about this chapter. Wait, hang on, yes there is, because the Bellamy Pirates are on their way. Uh-oh, Bellamy the Hyena's arrived. I don't know why Cricket couldn't tell them earlier about the South Bird, because they're going to need the South Bird in order to find this current and to make sure that they stay on it, like on the line to this place where they need to get to so that they can get blasted into the air and get to this sky island and yeah in the middle of the night they have to go into the nearby jungle and find the south bird <laughs> so it's it's so random it honestly is so random it's it's another fine chapter another fine chapter i think i did prefer this arc when we were on the sea in all honesty like i really did love the start of this arc now i'm a little bit like you know what it's still fine it's still fine not my favorite still quite a bit fun we did have the gang splitting off into little teams and it was cool to see Usopp actually not scared of spiders, whereas Nami and Sanji were both like hiding behind a tree. And yeah, I guess Usopp's more brave than I am because I'm terrified of spiders. So <laughs> he's doing well. Luffy and Chopper are together and I think they've spotted the South Bird. Zoro and Robin are together and Robin's been here and screams. I think from Nami and Sanji, but Zoro's telling her to just ignore it. So yeah, we're just moving along, we're just trying to get to this island. Seeing Bellamy, the hyena, arrive now, it'll be interesting to see what unfolds. I still don't know if I fully trust Cricket all the way. I feel like Usopp plays some doubt into my head about it. And now, like, the whole random South Bird thing in the middle of the night, have to go in the jungle to find it. it. It does feel, like, so off a little bit, but again, it could just be the story. It could just be the character. It could just be... I don't know, but it could make sense in the world. But yeah, it, it's fine. It, it's been fine so far. Okay, they caught the bird. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, it does look like Cricket is on their side. Like sometimes I feel like I should doubt characters more and not take them at face value all the time. Sometimes it's hard for me to know. And I, I admit my mistake. I apologize. Cricket is a stand-up guy. He really is. And so are Masira and Shoujo. Like they are... Oh, a really nice little team there. Unfortunately, they got beat up badly by the Bellamy Pirates. And Bellamy the Hyena has taken some treasure off them. And Luffy is standing up for Cricket. Well, he's going to kick Hyena's ass. That's why he's going. And he's going alone. They only have three hours, by the way. Three hours until they have to leave to get to the upstream so that they can get to Sky Pier. So we are on a time crunch here. We are on a time crunch. Sorry, it's just so distracting with him. So yeah, it's three hours before they have to leave to get to that upstream. Oh yeah, it was nice that Luffy was saying, oh, he got the gold himself. Cricket got the gold himself and he's worked so hard all these years just for someone to take it away. So again, even though Luffy's only known him for like two seconds, he's still going to kick someone's ass in his honor. And again, it just proves why Luffy's like the best character ever. Isn't that right, Ash? Isn't that right? Ooh. So yeah, they've got the bird. Luffy's going to kick some ass. Go on, Luffy, son. Ah! He finally landed a punch against Bellamy the hyena. The shit. The piece of scum shit. But this is pretty much all this chapter was. It was Luffy traveling t back to the town and confronting the hyena. And also the fact that Luffy's bounty is now 100 million berries. So he's worth a heck ton of berries. You know when you stroke a cat's head like so hard that their face goes like this and their eyes are like... Oh, that's what I'm doing to my little Ash right now. He looks so scared. Oh, I've honestly been so distracted with him lying on me. Yeah, that was the chapter, essentially. And while Luffy was running, he was, you know, putting into context the reason why he's fighting for Cricket, which was really nice, honestly. And, like, of course, I know exactly why Luffy's doing it, because Luffy's a really nice guy. Like, he'll stand up for anybody. And Cricket's been trying to get his family's name back on track, and he's been fighting so long and so hard for that, and... He's got this gold and yeah, it just, I get it. I totally get it. I don't know if Hyena is going to be put down with just one punch though, but it would be so good actually if it was, because I don't think every single villain we come across, we have to have a big battle with. Like 
it's okay to have a battle where the villain is all like macho macho man and he's talking the talk and walking the walk but he can't actually do the do you know what i mean like he could spring up as well he has like these springing powers where his feet or legs have turned into these big springs so he has had a devil fruit himself but luffy just scores you want to see me land a punch and then boom down on the floor so let's say if that actually did anything you know i honestly would love it if that's how hyena got took out because what an absolute coward hyena really is and hyenas themselves if we remember the lion king anyway cracking on ash is now off me so i should be able to read in peace oh my god what is this avengers endgame everybody seemed to come out again like it seemed like a reunion of sorts this chapter wow and ash is back on me again he's distracting me you need to stop i've only got a few chapters left of this arc and i want to finish it in peace but wow yes okay i was right about hyena being knocked out straight away and i'm really glad that happened I mean, while a fight, a big fight, is always epic and stuff, it's nice to see that some bad guys can just be taken down with one punch because they are that weak and they do just use their words and their mouths to, like, kind of rile people up without actually having any strength behind it. So that was really cool. I really enjoyed that. And now Luffy has the gold and he's on his way back to Cricket and his friends, so that's good. But the main thing about this is the fact that Boogie returned and Alveda and Ace, freaking Ace, Oh, I don't know what's going on, right? I do not know what the hell is going on. Ace is not going to betray Luffy, right? He's not going to betray Luffy. Although I am wondering why he's on the ship with Buggy and Alvida. It's so nice to see them again, honestly. I've kind of missed them. <laughs> and I've definitely missed Ace. But what did Buggy mean about Ace being the one to tell them where Luffy is? Like, he's not going to betray Luffy. Don't be daft. But, you know, we got a bit more lore as well with Whitebeard being the only pirate to have fought against Gold Roger. The only living pirate to have fought against Gold Roger and lived. Sorry, Gold D Roger now. I need to remember that. So it was so cool seeing everyone again, honestly. I really enjoyed that. And then we also have the five elders. The five elders, supreme leaders of the world government. And yeah, so they are looking for someone to replace Crocodile. So I answered my own question from earlier. They do have to replace a warlord of the sea. There has to be seven. So that's really cool. And also what they say about Shanks as well. What is Shanks up to? But they say Shanks could do a lot of damage, but I don't think his ambitions include world conquest. And he sent envoys to Whitebeard, and they're saying any contact between Whitebeard and Shanks will be catastrophic. Why? Why? It was so cool to see the Elders, but what else was cool was that we do end up seeing two more of the Seven Warlords as well. Sir Bartholomew Kuma and Sir Don Quixote Doflamingo. I will learn how to pronounce these names it's just my first time meeting them so i will learn i will learn but now suddenly we are getting like so much progress after what i thought was like maybe a little bit of a filler kind of thing a little bit of a filler side thing i mean not exactly filler but yeah i didn't feel like we were moving the story too far ahead too quickly but you know it's uh we've definitely gone to a quicker pace now and we're kind of galloping towards skype here now so that's really exciting i'm excited to see how we get to the sky island but also just the fact that Buggy and Alveda and Ace are back and will we actually see more of them or was this just like a one-time deal just to check in on what they were up to? We're getting there. What? The, the, the man from the tavern is Blackbeard? And that guy who fell from his horse who looked very weak and also gave Luffy an apple, which turned out to be fine, but some of them do explode, and seemed very weak and stuff as part of Blackbeard's crew. And the person who shot the seagulls before they even arrived in Jaya is part of Blackbeard's crew. The other crazy guy as well, Champ Jesus Burgess, Helmsman. I'm, I've seen him before, I'm sure, I think. But he doesn't stand out like the other ones. Supersonic Van Orga is the sharpshooter. And we have Blackbeard, Marshall Day Teach, who was the one who confirmed that the Sky Island existed. And then the Grim Reaper, Doc Q, who is the one who literally looks like he's going to die any minute. With a horse that looks like it's going to die any minute. He's called the Grim Reaper, that's terrifying. Blackbeard, but also Shanks, ow, Shanks, uh, Shanks was in it again, and also Hawkeye, Hawkeye returned, there was just like, oh, everyone's coming back, I love it. So I think Shanks is on his way to Whitebeard to fight him. He did tell his crew, get ready for a fight and bring good booze, so I think he's on his way to fight him, but Whitebeard is huge, Whitebeard is huge, we finally got to meet Whitebeard, and he's huge, <laughs> like what the world? There is another guy called Lafitte. 
Lafette. And he's gone to like the admirals and stuff and he's saying that he wants to recommend someone to be the new warlord of the sea. Whew, just a lot happened in that chapter and I'm kind of wrapping my head around it all. But Blackbeard is scaring me just a little bit. He seems quite reasonable, but at the same time, I just don't know what to expect. And I don't know what to expect from Whitebeard. I don't know what to expect from Shanks. What's going on? <laughs> the cats are honestly just, they're like, don't read, Gav, don't read. I love you, but I want to read. So essentially this chapter is just them getting to this whirlpool and getting into it. <laughs> essentially. I mean, they haven't like fully gotten into it. They were almost late. Luffy did arrive just in time, just in the nick of time. And yeah, they're heading to it as well. They're gonna make it, obviously. Yeah, honestly, I have nothing else to say about this chapter. It was nice to have it back in the current adventure with the Straw Hats in this chapter. We did have a few side stories there that I think will inform the future of the series, which is always exciting. But yeah, literally that was a, a short chapter, just the Straw Hats getting to this whirlpool. And just like that, I have finished the Jaya arc. And it did go by in the blink of an eye. And I feel like as short as it felt, and it was like pretty short, especially compared to Alabasta, and the next arc, which looks to be even bigger than Alabasta. <laughs> I feel like it was so important. Like, I feel like there were so many important moments that happened that really is going to inform the story going forward. And the final chapter of the Jaya arc was very good, very exciting. Seeing the ship going up and riding the upstream and Nami using her navigator skills to help, well, essentially make the ship fly. It looks like the ship's flying and we're going high in the sky. They haven't quite reached Sky Pier or whatever is up amongst the clouds. They haven't reached it yet. We're ending on a bit of a cliffhanger, but I'm so excited to see what the Straw Hats do next. But overall, like the chapter was absolutely fine. It was good, but I don't have a whole lot of thoughts on the chapter on its own. But it was interesting that Blackbeard has kind of made himself known to Luffy like he almost caught up with Luffy just before they got blasted up the upstream but he does tell Luffy you have a hundred million bounty and Zoro has a 60 million berry bounty and Luffy's just like so happy about it in fact oh, a panel I absolutely love in the final chapter of this arc is Luffy being so happy and excited about getting up this current and well it's before the current and the upstream has happened and it's them going into the whirlpool a dream in a dream now that's a great adventure if we don't do this we'll regret it for the rest of our lives and even Nami, Usopp and Chopper are like, he, he looks so happy. <laughs> like, yes, he does because like, this is like the best thing that's happening to Luffy is he's going on these adventures and he's loving it. And I'm loving the adventure too. But very, very interesting arc. Great to meet Blackbeard, Whitebeard, to see the elders, to see Shanks again, Buggy, Elvira, Ace, Hawkeye. Like there was just so much about this arc that I think really propelled the series forward. There were moments where I thought, hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. some of those slower chapters really did weigh it down a little bit for me. Overall, really liked it. I, I absolutely love the fact that Luffy gave Hyena just that one punch and he was out. Like that was the best. And Luffy's character development in this arc too was top tier. I freaking loved it. Saying that though, I probably will just give this arc a 7.5 out of 10, which again is still pretty high, I would say. It's still pretty high. It's like on par with Little Garden for me, and I don't think it's as good as, say, Drum Island or Alabasta, but definitely better than Logtown and Whiskey Peak, for instance, and Reverse Mountain. You know, like those previous arcs, I feel like this has definitely settled itself just above, and I feel like the start of this arc as well, I just loved Loved, loved, loved the deep sea exploration, going to the shipwreck underwater and seeing how piratey the start of this arc was and it just made me feel so excited about it. So there was quite a lot to love about it, honestly. So next we do have the Sky Pier arc, which is 66 chapters. So expect another two and a half hour video on that one. That vlog should be coming in a week or so. I'll be doing my manga tournament next. So excited for that. But yeah, be sure to subscribe to see me read more of the One Piece arcs for the first time. That is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to leave this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave all the comments down below. What do you think of the Jaya arc? Do you love it? Do you hate it? What are your favourite moments from the arc? Did I not mention something in this video that you think might be important later on? Do let me know. I want to give a huge thank you to my patrons for supporting my channel. If you'd like to join my Patreon or follow me on any social media, then all the links are down in the description box. But yeah, I hope I will see you in the next video. Bye!